a solid has a definite size and shape. The forces holding it together are very strong. Compare this solid with a gas whose size and shape are completely determined by the containing vessel. A liquid has a definite size, but it takes the shape of the lower part of the vessel containing it. Usually, therefore, it has a surface in contact with air. Now, the surface of a liquid, water for example, behaves like an elastic skin. This skin is strong enough to support a certain amount of weight. These small water creatures are actually running about on the surface skin of water without penetrating it and therefore without wetting their legs. The existence of the elastic skin on water can be shown in many ways. Take an ordinary sewing needle and float a piece of paper on water. Carefully place the needle, which should be dry, on the paper and then cause the paper to sink. This leaves the needle on top of the water, supported by the surface skin. Very different in shape is a watch spring, which, if lowered gently, can also be made to rest on the surface, being held up by it. But the surface of water will also resist upward thrust. A specially made float is lowered and allowed to take up its natural position. It's pushed down until a frame on its stem breaks into the water surface. This surface now resists the buoyancy or upward thrust of the float, which is held down at lower than floating level. If unsupported, a liquid will tend to form drops, each of which is completely contained by a surface skin. Modifying the surface of water reduces its tension. A few drops of soap solution on the surface supporting the watch spring reduce the surface tension and, in the end, the spring sinks. If ether vapor is poured onto the surface of the water resisting the upward thrust of the float, again surface tension is reduced and the float can rise to its natural position. Let's watch it again. Take a square of cork and insert into one edge near a corner a small piece of camphor. Place on water. The square rotates because the surface tension of the liquid is reduced as the camphor dissolves. The movement of these toy boats is explained in a similar way. The nature of surface tension can be illustrated by liquid films and bubbles. Here is a film of soap solution stretched across the mouth of a thistle funnel. The film is so elastic that it behaves like a rubber balloon. To a bubble suspended from a ring, a wire shape is attached. The film resists a stretching force. Films can be made strong enough to resist rough handling. Strength and elasticity are partly due to there being a surface in a state of tension on each side of the film. Films of soap solution can be formed on geometrical shapes. For example, a ring giving a disc, and a cube which produces a film of much more complicated shape. The movement of films as they take up their final shapes is worth watching. A bubble is punctured through the hole in a little paper washer. Here's the final result. Capillary attraction is another effect of surface tension, which is seen in the movement of liquids in narrow spaces or tubes. Here are two clean glass plates touching along one edge and separated along the other by a strip of metal. 
They are clipped together at an angle to form a V-shape or wedge. When the plates are lowered into a liquid, it rises highest along the thin edge of the wedge. When a tube penetrates the surface of a liquid, there is a rise against the force of gravity. If the tube is narrower, the rise is more marked. Here's a diagram representing two glass tubes of different diameters, both dipping into water. The thick arrows represent the pull of gravitation and the thin arrows the pull of surface tension. In both tubes, the liquid rises until upward and downward pulls are balanced. We now turn to some common applications of surface tension. Blotting paper absorbs ink because between the fibers of which it's made, there exist narrow spaces into which surface tension draws the ink. These spaces can be seen clearly under the microscope. The same idea is used in lamp wick. Here, liquid is being drawn up through a wick until it drops from the other end. The process will continue until the liquid in the glass falls below the level of the end of the wick. The burning of a candle depends on the rising up the wick of the liquid paraffin wax. Outside water, the bristles of a paintbrush take up the same general shape as when they're submerged in water. But on withdrawal, the surface tension of the liquid remaining between the bristles reduces the general shape and size to that desired by the painter. A very important application of surface tension is the destruction of mosquitoes. Their larvae hang from the surface of water, each breathing through a tube. If, however, oil is sprayed on the water, the surface tension is so reduced that the larvae can no longer hang from it. They sink, and being unable to breathe, they die. In this way, many areas of the world have been rendered safer for human habitation.